How's it going guys? Tax HD here with my NHL 2015 mock draft. I'm only going to be predicting the first 10 picks as I really don't know too many of the players outside of that. So don't really just want to be guessing when I have no idea who the players are. But anyway guys, you can get right into it here. The first pick, the most obvious pick of the draft, the most obvious pick probably since Sidney Crosby. We have Connor McDavid going number one overall to the Edmonton Oilers. Obviously Edmonton finished third last, but they won the lottery. And Connor McDavid's a huge piece for the Oilers turnaround. They brought in all new management. I'm thinking more likely than not because they do not want to screw up having Conor McDavid. They don't want to waste any years. They want to get as good as they can, as cl quick as they can. Because say two years from now, if the Oilers are actually a playoff team, having Conor McDavid making less than a million dollars a year is a huge, huge bonus in terms of all the players they can bring in around him. So that's basically what they're doing. They're trying to get as good as they possibly can, as quick as they possibly can. No more messing around with it. And I think it's going to turn out really good for uh, Oilers fans. And they should be super happy that they won Connor McDavid like I'm sure any other team would so unfortunately for Buffalo no Connor McDavid but at number two they still get Jack Eichel who will be a superstar in his own right I think any other year uh probably since 2009 when Tavares got drafted Eichel would be a first overall pick and obviously this year the only reason he's not is because of McDavid best prospect since Crosby so hard to compete with that but Jack Eichel is still a very good player I think he's gonna do great in Buffalo obviously Buffalo has a bunch of good young players already so three or four years time they should be a definite force in the east this next pick guys is probably the pick that will decide the next probably the rest of the draft in all honesty at least the next 10 picks or so and that's the Arizona Coyotes um, and I think they're gonna go with Dylan Strom here for me it was a toss-up between Strom and Hannafin and I think they're gonna go with Strom simply because they haven't had that franchise number one center ever I don't think they don't like even when they made that run to the Western Conference final I think they had like Hansel or maybe Ribeiro was their first line center so they never really had that first line franchise center Strom could potentially give them that obviously it's not set in stone or anything but leading score in the NHL, OHL and I think you know he has a lot of pros a lot of uh potential I should say uh Ryan Strom his brother is a very good player and he's a better prospect than Ryan Strom so it'll be interesting to see I think he's like 6'3 so he's a big center and if he pans out well he'd be a great piece for them put uh Max Domi on the left wing Anthony Duclair on the right wing that's an insane first line for Arizona for uh, many years to come or you know if they end up relocating whatever organization they're playing for for many years to come at number four guys again a toss-up between Hannafin and now Marner and I think Toronto goes Marner here simply because they've already got Mark Morgan Riley they got Jake Gardner and I think I think they want like a superstar in Toronto and I think Marner has he's, I guess he's like Noah Hannafin you know what you're gonna get you're gonna get a solid defenseman who'll probably pan out to be like a number two defenseman maybe a number one defenseman I don't think he's quite that good Marner he might not pan out or he might pan out to be an amazing player and I think Toronto's willing to take that risk he's been compared to Patty Kane obviously he's probably not gonna be as good as Patty Kane otherwise he'd be going first overall but the fact he's even compared to Kane just tells you how good he's gonna be as well Mark Hunter uh, being a corner of the Knights, now working for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's seen a lot of Mitch Marner play, and I think that he's definitely going to influence this pick. And if Marner's there at number four, I think the Leafs are going to be, uh, be uh, I guess, inclined to take him. I think that's who they end up going with. And I think it'll turn out really well. I think he actually does have a lot of potential. And anyone who still thinks size matters, just look at Tyler Johnson. Look at guys like Gallagher. Size if you know how to play hockey, the size doesn't matter. I think Marner is going to be a very good NHL player. Now he's number five, Carolina Hurricanes. So the easiest pick in the draft, taking Noah Hannafin. Basically, after whoever three and four don't take, that's who Carolina gets, in my opinion, with the top five players. And they're going to get Hannafin, who they need. They need that number one defenseman. Like I said, I think Hannafin will probably pan out to be like a number two defenseman, which is still very, very good. He could be that number one guy. And obviously, he's a very strong defenseman. Eyes. Uh, best defenseman in the draft but I think those first four teams will be looking more at the forwards so still Carolina is a very good player here add him with Hayden Fleury Ryan Murphy and they're going to have a solid uh young defensive core and number six here this was a pick a tough pick for me it was basically between Lawson Kraus and uh, Ivan Provorov but I think New Jersey goes with Kraus here uh they're another team that's just lacking a superstar at forward like if you look at New Jersey's lineup it's kind of like all second third and fourth line guys like they really don't have like a first line anything like in my opinion they just have kind of like pretty good second line guy so Lawson Krause again if he turns out could be like a really good first line power forward one of the best players on the Devils again if he pans out so I think Devils will take the chance with him number seven though we have Ivan Provorov I think he's uh, I think it's kind of like there's a top five players I mentioned and I think it's Krause and Provorov and then I think it's the rest of the draft like I think those are kind of the sections so Philly takes Provorov here obviously a really really good young defenseman some people even think he's better than Hannafin so 
it'll be interesting to see. Maybe Carolina takes Provorov over Hannafin. I don't really see it happening, but I think Philly gets a really good young defenseman here, which is something they need, and they can start to build around and, you know, make that uh, team kind of like, kind of going younger in Philly. So I think just another good young piece. And number eight here, guys, we have Miko Rantanen. Uh, he's actually the number one ranked European player. And I think Columbus GM, you know, being from Finland, he's not scared to take those European players. And I think he'll... uh take a chance here on Miko Rantanen. Very good forward, and like I say, he's the number one Euro- European player. I'm not sure we ranked on the uh, ISS uh, rankings at the end. I think he was top 10, maybe like number 11, but I think Columbus takes him here. He's a really good, uh, like, flashy scorer, and I think he could definitely help out the team. And number 9 here, guys, we have Zanose taking Matthew Barzil. In my opinion, he'd just be the best um, pick at this position, basically, not based on position or anything left. I think he's just, you know, the best player they can take. And obviously, you got Joe Thornton aging, other guys aging. Uh, they're gonna have to place them. I think he's a center, but, you know, maybe he could play wing, for instance, if they trade out Marlo, somebody like that. Bring him in. And I think it's just a good pick for San Jose. And finally, guys, at number 10 here, we have Colorado Avalanche taking Zach Rensky. Uh, he's played for Michigan, so obviously he's one of my favorite players in this draft. I'm a Michigan fan. And also, Colorado, one of the big things they need, along with Dallas, a couple other teams there in the central, is defense. So I think he definitely helps that out. He's played in college, so I think he's more NHL ready than, say, someone that played in junior. So who knows? Maybe he can make the team next year. Colorado's got a young team, so I think he'd definitely fit in. I think it's a really good pick there at number 10. I'm going to take a guess here at who the Detroit Red Wings pick. So... This picks more of who I want them to pick, I'm not going to lie, than who I think they'll pick, and that is Travis Kunekny. I'm not sure if he'll be available at number 19. I don't really see him being available at number 19, but if he is, I really hope the Red Wings can get this guy. Really good scorer, again, similar to Mitch Marner. He's kind of undersized. I think he's like 5'9 and a half or something. I don't even think he's 5'10. Marner's 5'10, I believe, maybe 5'11. But I think, you know, We've seen from Tyler Johnson in the playoffs, a bunch of other guys, that, you know, the size isn't really as big a deal anymore. And if you're kind of, like, putting too much emphasis on size, you're going to lose out on a lot of players. Like, you look at Tyler Johnson, wasn't even drafted. Uh, a lot of the young, a lot of the smaller guys get drafted late, turn out to be really good, kind of like Andrew Shaw guys, Brandon Saad guys. So I think uh, Kunekny is really, really good, skillful forward. Would love to see the Red Wings pick him up if he's available. And if not, hopefully we can still get somebody good. So, anyway, guys, those are my predictions for the top 10 picks in the 2015 draft. Again, guys, the draft's on Friday, so make sure you stay tuned. It should be awesome. Thank you, thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.